Hi once again. Uh, yeah, what can I have to say? Very pleased to receive this phone today off of eBay. Now, it sends my memory back some years ago from a James Bond film where this particular model was depicted in one of the scenes from Switzerland. I can't remember what the actual film was, but it was James Bond 007 and um, looked quite a characteristic and interesting phone which I think is fairly rare um, not see many of these for sale although at the moment there's about three out there um, so I was lucky enough to actually obtain this phone uh, which is in good working order it goes back and according to the diagrams got circuit diagram as well There's the circuit diagram, which goes back, well this original diagram goes back to 1950, yet the phone is a bit later than that, so it's obviously a model which they had actually carried on making for a while. But you see it's got down there, nine, uh, 1950, with the model and type. It's always very nice to get a diagram and the diagram was printed or well on a paper stuck to the back of the plate which screws onto the underside of the telephone. Unfortunately it's missing uh, one of its rubber feet but that's not a problem. Should be able to match that up fa fairly well to the minor problem. Rather interesting. Here's the actual handset. The transmitter in there, I won't take it out, it's a bit fiddly, is one of these modern, well I say modern, it's um, electronic type, it's got a little chipper on it as well. Very small, but it fits in there, that was actually on the phone when I got it. So I would think this phone had probably previously been owned by a collector. It was obviously someone that knew what they were doing. Also, look at the cord. It's not plastic covered. It's um, like a fabric cord. I don't know if it is fabric or, or woven plastic not sure but it's in very very good nick and a little bit different nice tight uh, coils in very good shape now you can see the the dial and once again look where the zero or the O is compared to the finger stop. I know the finger stop's a little bit out of adjustment but it was I, I got this like that it appears it might have been knocked at some time but I'm not going to mess about with it it's still functional. The dial had obviously had a knock as well and it's a bit of that is the middle bit is cracked but it's completely functional little bit slow but not to worry not a problem I'll show you the other side of the dial there's the nice shape case very little bit of damage on it which is due to age a little nick out of there but apart from that it's in very very good shape all right the case is colored more than the handset. The handsets remained virtually white or ivory whereas the case has 
slightly darkened. You can see where the handset had rested on there, that was quite a bit lighter. There is also two little holes, one each side, which looks like there may have been, I can't prove it, a carry handle at some time. But I must admit the other one that I've seen for sale hasn't got this handle either. So it's either an additional piece that was added or not, I don't know. Anyhow, the case, as I say, is in very good condition and um, it's got a quite nicer shine on it as well. So, yes, it is good. Very pleased with this. Let's come into the phone itself. Here we have the ringer. There is, if I can point it, there you've got the flat bias spring. Now that was out of adjustment when I got it. It was actually twisted upwards so that it was non-functional. So I readjusted that so you've got a slight bias. Plonk that and it, you detect that and it, it allows the clapper to come back. So that's working. Um, also what's interesting, you've got two resistors there which are um, like a wire wound job on two spools. Uh, this spool here on the left, where it fixes onto the plastic or the Bakelite base, had actually become broken, but that could have been done years ago. Um, might have been in the post, I don't know, but a little bit of careful using a bit of a suit uh, of um, Araldite has restored that to its former self. So that part is now okay. The um, you've got a large, fairly large resistor there. I don't know what that's sort of a um, high wattage job brown black red um, what's that brown black red brown there's white blacks two and red three and the gold band which is the actual tolerance of the uh, the resistor there is a way of memorizing the uh, color code I won't go into it now because it's rather rude um, but it's obviously been known for many many years but um, I think if I was to tell you what it was I'd be <laughs> removed from <laughs> YouTube but I think a lot of people do know it here we've got the spring set the cradle springs very very well made You've got your anti-side tone coil plus a couple of, of uh, capacitors. It's hardwired, not a printed circuit in sight, which is good. The bell adjusters are done on these two screws. I won't turn it upside down to show, but all it goes on the other side of that is like a, a like a screw slot and by turning it a quarter all it does is to move the gongs out or in and between the two of them you can get your low ring or high ring as the case may be you've also got the oh I haven't mentioned the name have I now this is the name that was on the phone Autophon AG this must not be confused with an English company called Autophone with an E on the end. No connection whatsoever. The Autophone from England 
had telephones made or they had an office or factory at some time in Wimbledon just after the war or during those years um, they understood the phones were not of very good quality they were more or less made down to a price and they were supplied to the uh, the private side non-BT or GPO then but then later they imported phones from Germany I believe but this is Autofon which is the Swiss company which I believe took over from other companies in Switzerland which were quite large and one of them if I turn the dial the cover over it's got three names on there actually there's one of the names there Weidman this was thought to be the name of the phone we got Autofon which I think was a company which was taken over or they become the a part of the company and Solotherm I believe is the name of the town but correct me if I'm wrong also in the and I won't take it out in the receiver which is a very neat job is another name Gefella which is well known for their Igerphone which you sometimes see the Gesella the Gefella Iger and these two three names with the added name Hasler are all associated as I think one company now and they were at one time the largest Swiss telecommunication firm or company and they did make good quality phones in fact one of these phones was sold in auction I believe at Christie's from a film star I don't know her name I've forgotten her name my name name's not very good but it was out of the house or the villa that she owned in Switzerland and the identical phone to this but it did not well this phone hasn't got the provenance of that other phone and because it had the provenance of being owned by this film star went for a lot of money a very large amount of money so it just shows you the effect of provenance can have on antiques yeah these things are antique I suppose over a hundred years are antique this is probably not a hundred years so it's vintage but nevertheless it's, it just shows you that these are an, invent, um, an investment and I sometimes think when I'm buying these or the, the odd ones I get on eBay I think have I wasted my money and I say to myself well no it's invested and I dread to think how many phones I've got now plus the other bits and bobs which I've collected over the years starting originally from buying stuff at boot sales various flea markets I'm getting another phone actually from a seller it's a Belgium phone which he said it came from a flea market in Belgium and I'm wondering if it's my favourite flea market which I haven't seen for many years now in Brussels it's in an area called the area of ball games um, and uh, it's a very big flea market um, I don't know if it's on every day but it's certainly a very big one and yeah I've had a lot of interesting bits from there including some old lamps many years ago so anyhow I, I'm going off subject let's show you the dial there's the dial now I pointed out that the there was a gap between the finger stop and the zero or the O zero actually 
and that tells me that it was based on the automatic electric type of dial which is found on the ITN phone, the Indian telephones, on automatic electric telephones of England uh, for the private side, not BT. BT they use their uh, normal trigger type dial. But this design is very, very good and it's always characterised with a space, little space between the finger stop and the zero. And this one is one of the best made ones I've ever, I've ever come across. Beautifully made. It is distinct. It's an automatic style dial. Unfortunately, the little piece of the screw and cod holding the wire down has actually gone, so I shall probably just use a little bit of sticky tape to hold the wire back so it doesn't foul anything when the case is put on. But as I say, all in all, I'm quite pleased with this phone. As I said, I felt like a dog with two tails. I was pleased. Just recapping again, there's your bell. It's only a single coin. I think it's quite a low resistance bell as well. If I can look at it on here. Um, yeah, there's your bell. It looks like it's just 600 ohms. But the bell circuit itself goes via a resistor, which is unusual because that's one of the lines, your A and B lines coming in, goes through a resistor. Don't know why, but it, all, it, all, it obviously does. And um, You've got your normal capacitor there, which is 1.5. Back through the two windings of the induction coil. I notice this one only has two windings on the induction coil. And all your other various spring sets. You've got to virtually work out which ones are which. But it sure it shouldn't be too diff too difficult. Anyhow, I think that's all I can say on this. I'll pop the base back on. As I think the only little job I had to do was to re-glue that coil back. And as I say, that had probably been misplaced or or or, or damaged years ago it wouldn't have made any difference had I not no noticed it but it did rattle a bit but now it's fairly firm and I can pop the cover on take a picture a still picture of the phone and then put it on YouTube anyhow once again thanks for watching I'm hoping to pick a Belgian phone up, as I say, from uh, this uh, flea market. It's one example I don't know. So we'll wait and see what comes up. Anyhow, thanks again for watching. And um, I'll get a proper picture of this and put it up. Thanks again. Thanks for watching.